his supporters, blows his whistle. George Moncur steps up and scores! What a ball for them! The goalkeeper was very close and it's jumping. He lets in a low cross and that's been turned in! And the other back on level terms. We'll come to Jay! It's a low cross, it's an inviting cross, and it's been turned in by Theo Archibald, and he celebrates in front of the travelling faithful. Welcome to Orient Live here in East London, looking over the big smoke. And if you look at that closely, Leighton Orient fans, you will see a League One football stadium. And the O's are back where they belong, and they are playing for the title now. And it's another slightly tough game this afternoon as we're facing crew Alexandra but the O's will be high from Tuesday night's promotion party and hopefully the goals will still be flowing and we will be bringing every single one of you them right here on Orient Live and I'm delighted to be joined at Brisbane Road by a host of club legends we've got Jabo Ibrahe, Glenn Wilkie and Vice Chairman Kent Teague. <laughs> Guys, it's uh, the excitement's been building. Uh, have you slept since Tuesday, Kent? Uh, I have slept, which is a good idea uh, for me to get a little rest. But all I've done the last four days is laugh, giggle, and smile. That's all I got for everybody. I am so, uh, y'all call it buzzing. I am just so <laughs> excited. Uh, it, it's been hard to sleep, no doubt. And I mean, it's, it's unsurprising, really, because the scenes on Tuesday were ecstatic. Unbelievable scenes from from looking at the game, losing the game, and everyone's a bit despondent, to the lights going out and looking at results elsewhere in the country and they go for us, to just the reaction. Ken, you were there. Yeah. It, it must have been phenomenal. Just the emotions, your emotions, what they must have been up and down all night. Oh, absolutely. Just being in the away end and being with the fans and everybody, there's like little ripples of rumors of like where we're at and we're all constantly trying to re- you know, refresh our, it goes, it goes 90 plus 5, 90 plus 8, 90 plus 11. We're like, just, just be done. Uh, it was great. It was unbelievable. And I mean, I'm sure the beers flowed quite steadily on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, Jabbo, but this is a professional group of players. They'll, they know what they need to do to, to win the title now and, and they won't settle for anything less. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you've got to enjoy work this hard throughout the season to, you know, get to this pinnacle. And you know, one one or two drinks is allowed, you know. But then you you come back into the business end, you know, what, what's at stake tonight, this this afternoon? And you know, they're going to be fully focused. They're going to be, you know, it's a free hit in their mind. They're going to be buzzing. They're going to be up for it, and hopefully get a job done today. And I mean, Ken, you will know better than anyone, and you and the board, Richie, the players, they don't settle for less. They haven't all season, and they've set those levels. And you'd, you'd, you'd expect them to go out and clinch it now. Yeah, yesterday at training at the training ground. Richie was really focused on the fact that we had been promoted, but then the conversation switched. Yes, we've been promoted, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to win the league, and now let's go refocus, and everyone understand we have not achieved what we ultimately want to achieve, and let's do that as soon as possible. That was the message. With that, did you hang around to watch them train uh, after the message? Yeah, so how this works is, is that I arrive at Buckhurst Hill about 9.30, Martin Ling picks me up. We go in, we have a coffee, and then I sit with some of the players as they have breakfast. Then I stay through all of training and then have lunch. So yes, I see the training. And I've done this for years now. I'm very fortunate to get to do it. Um, but yeah, that I see how the training is, the intensity, all of that. And, and it's at a level that you would expect of people who are chasing a title. Well, when, you, when you were doing that sort of throw, when you're doing that throughout the seasons, and you come in and watch training sessions and stuff like that, could you feel the, could you feel the, in, the intense event at the start of the season, thinking where, where the season could go? Yeah, because well, so having done it now for six years, I, I have sort of a reference of like the different club, you know, the different squads and the different players and the different managers and how it's all managed. Um, and y yeah, this year has been especially interesting just because of how well everyone gets along as individuals. It's really great to see. And before we get to the football side of things, Ken, <laughs> let's talk about a certain Darius Rucker who seems to have uh, <laughs> taken over, especially the Orient Twitters uh, and, and social medias in recent weeks. Yeah. Wagon Wheel has become a, a hit with the fans. The players love it. As a, as a Texan boy yourself, you must love uh, hearing this, I do, this country I western do. music. Well, I love country and western music. Of course, I was raised on it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, Yes, I've actually seen Darius Rucker in concert. So um, it's, yeah, listen, they're doing what they do. 
and they're going to make it happen. If they want to sing songs, let them sing whatever song they want to sing. It's all good. So was it you who introduced the song no, to the, no, no, to the no, club? No, 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 no. That, that, that's not my role. That's right. not my role. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the football then. And it's a couple of changes for the O's this afternoon. Uh, obviously with Omar Beckles picking up that suspension on Tuesday night. Jamie McCart starts this afternoon and also Jaden Sweeney replaces Tom James who has a little knock. But here is the lineup in full and he is looking to extend that record of clean sheets. Is number 22, Lawrence Vigaru. We have the back four of number 24, Jaden Sweeney, 33, Jamie McCart, 43 head turns and 32, Rob Hunt. We've got the two midfield generals. We've got the captain, number 18, Darren Prattley and 15, Idris El Mazzouni. And that unchanged fluid front four, number 34, Kieran Sadlier, 14, George Moncur, 7, Paul Smith and 10, Ruel Sotiriou. And on the bench for the O's is Sam Sargent, Tom James, Shadrach Oji, Craig Clay, Jordan Brown, Aaron Drynan and Charlie Kelman. Now, we've actually had quite a lot of success since you came into the club, Kent. You're, you were very vocal about the plan and the six-year plan and, and it's been achieved. How proud are you of that group of players and, and, and what they've achieved this season? Well, the thing that we've talked about and, and we've been talking about here lately is, is the number of points per game that we've had this year. And when we look at the number of points per game that we've had, we've always had the highest points per game throughout the entire season. So they have performed at the highest possible level. So now it's time for them to just finish what they started. Just continue to do the things they've done. They naturally know how to win. Let's just go ahead and go get another win, maybe two, and then we can take care of the rest of it after that. And it's obviously a shame to not have Omar Beckles on the pitch, uh, but uh, that, that lineup, you're, you're confident that they'll go and do what they've done all season. And if anything, it might be a bit of champagne football. They'll be riding high probably. Like, like Ken says, yesterday at the training ground, the message from the manager is, we've not won anything yet. We've got promotion. As a footballer, you are winners. If you're not a winner, you don't play professional sport. You've got that drive. You, you want to win games of football. You want to win titles. We're in touching distance of winning the biggest prize in our league this season, you know. Don't let it fall at the last minute. So I'm sure they'll be motivated after the chat that Kent just said that Richie's had with the players yesterday and, and the message he's got across to them. They, they'll be fired up today and they, they won't want to lose the league from this, this position. They, they will not want to do that because Yes, we got promoted, but could you imagine the, the talk for years to come about the team who, who didn't get the league title? Well, let's not even go into that territory. <laughs> no <Then>. doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Jabbo, are you expecting goals today? Obviously, we, we, we weren't fortunate enough to see any on Tuesday, though it doesn't feel like it, but the, the vibe around Brisbane Road today, the energy, the, the excitement, hopefully that front four will go out there and, and put on a show. Yeah, 100%. I think um, the, the, the attackers are going to be full of confidence. Um, you know, a couple of them want to get into double figures as well. So these are the games you can just finish it off and cap a good season. So I think there'll be plenty of goals um, and I expect some from Saturia today. Right, well, we're going to let Kent go and enjoy the excitement building up and go and mingle with the fans as he deserves too. But now let's hear from the Orient head coach, Richie Wellens. Crew will be a little bit different. Um, I think that the manager's gone in there mid-season, done a good job. His first, his first game was obviously a victory against us um, in the FA Cup. So I think he's... He's done a good job, he's got them safe, they had a bit of a wobble, but now he, he's done really well in the, in the recent weeks. Um, and Crew are always a club that historically play really good football, produce young players and sell them on. And um, it looks like they're trying to get a little bit of their identity back. On to this weekend again, um, selection, obviously one of the um, issues will be Omar Beckles in, in terms of his suspension. Um, a few options for you to choose from as well in terms of who will replace him. Yeah, well, we've got Jaden Sweeney back. Jaden's been out injured for the last for the last week or so, so he's back. Um, <clears throat> we've obviously got McCarty who come on. Shadrach now is back in the squad. Um, it's not ideal losing Bex because he has a presence. He's a good leader. Um, he was disappointed because I don't think he was a sending off. I think he's made contact, but I think the, the lads headed it that far. It's, it's in Vigru's hands before the lads even took took another step. So um, that was disappointing. You know, Vigs will have to. Uh, sorry, Beckles will have to set out the next two games and it could be really really big games for us but we do have we do have cover um, especially now Jaden coming back in well the excitement really is tangible here in the stadium I mean listening to Richie speak as well Jabbo he, he's he knows exactly what we need as the chart goes and you just <laughs> feel so confident today that he's going to have them fired up don't you 
Yeah, 100%. I mean, he's, he's kept the same tone throughout the whole season, to be fair to him. Every time, sort of, when they were flying at the start of the season, everyone's getting, like, a bit gassed and overexcited. He was like, you know, on to the next game. We're not getting too carried away. And again, now we've got a promotion. He's still saying, look, we've got a job to do. We've got to finish it off properly. The message is clear. They're going to be buzzing. We'll get it done. And you look at some of the players out on the pitch, I think Royal Syria has eight now, and, and he'll be looking to, to add goals to his tally. These players are playing for, obviously, they're playing for the title still. They'll want to get those numbers as high as possible. They'll want to finish as strong as possible. And I'm, I'm guessing some even have an eye on League One next year. Oh, 100%. Like we said a moment ago about winners want to win all the time, you know, and they want to go and win the trophy. They've got their own personal targets, which they would have had at the beginning of the year, whether you're a goal scorer and you set yourself a target of, I want to score X amount of goals. You probably did it when you yeah. played. Defenders having, I want to keep so many clean sheets as well as a goalkeeper, which they've done in abundance this season you know they've, they've kept the record number of clean sheets midfielders whether it's assists whether it's tackles all these stats that, that go around they've all got their personal targets as well as the team targets so and and it's a bit of pride it comes down to a bit of pride as well they've got the they've got the promotion out of the way it's now going on and going that extra step and i think me personally i think three points today would secure promotion for us as, as champions well, let's let's see what happens but Talking about individuals, George Moncur needs some serious praise. He's he's really turned things on in the last five, six, seven games. He's he's, he's been crucial, and he's just looked like he really wants this title. Yeah, he's it, it, done really well. I mean, I, I've I've played with George before, so I knew I've always known he's a quality player, top player, especially a great person in the dressing room as well. And obviously, he had his illnesses and and his, and his things going on with his tooth. And it sometimes takes a while for a player to get back into his rhythm. But boy, did he come back! right at the right time he's been fantastic he's been a leader he's galvanised us as well and I'm just, I'm just buzzing hopefully he has a, another strong performance if he caps the season off really well can you imagine how many points we would have if he like he was like fired up from the beginning or not fired up but he was banging that form at the beginning of the season and he goes through it maybe we would have got promoted Glenn <laughs> well maybe we would have been maybe we would have been champions 10, yeah, 10 well, games ago we still, will, we still will be Glenn hopefully um, but no he, he's been great and in that midfield and he was so good at the beginning of the season as well yes he had his, his injury and his fitness struggles and, and illness but him Prattley and Idris El Mazzouni them as a three in midfield I remember talking about them after five ten games and they they were so consistent they were so impressive and Darren Prattley captain fifth promotion birthday boy today what an opportunity oh, for him yeah. to go out and, and is maybe he 36 or 38 today 36 or 21 by the looks of yeah. the way he plays I don't know what he them two in the middle, them, them two defensive holding midfielders throughout the season when we played that way, been unbelievable. Best in the division by far. And, and it's like you've got the youngster who's in on loan, learning his trade. And I, I said this at the beginning of the season when we were pitch side, you could hear Darren Prattley talking. He just through the game. He was giving him like encouragement and a bit of positional sense and where to go just to add to his armoury because he's got the skills, he's got the ability. And he helped him through and pushed him through. And, and for me, Idris has been our player of the season. Controversial, I know. Um, but Darren Prattley, looking at that first sort of half on, on Tuesday night at Gillingham, he was unbelievable. Unbelievable. He was fired up. He got him, got the ball. He was moving forward. And what, what really surprised me, and we'll probably come onto it in a few clips in a moment, he was getting forward so much, a bit like he did earlier on in the season. He was given that free reign to get forward, not just to sit and get the ball and keep it ticking over. He was bombing on forward, and when he does that, he pulls people apart and leaves the space for Idris to get the ball. But this is the thing: the game of football on Tuesday night almost went unnoticed uh, with, with everything that happened afterwards. But the performance for the first 20 minutes, and, and even when we had 10 men, was exceptional. I've, I thought in our little WhatsApp group that we've got, I sent a message, uh, bang on 12 minutes, saying, "Are we sure that Real Madrid are at Chelsea tonight and not in Gillingham?" Because the way we played. The way we passed the ball, as we can see on the screen now, we passed it around. We had a real intensity about us. And, and Gillingham, they're, they're no mugs. Yes, they're in a lower position, but we caused them major, major, major problems. And we, we were really unfortunate not to score in that first 12 minutes. Obviously, the sending off happened and the goal against us happened, but I was so impressed with how we played our link-up play. One, two, touch. And we played the ball forward earlier than we'd normally do. And we said it all season, let's pass the ball forward as quickly as possible because we're too slow in our build-up a lot of the time. Tuesday night in his first 20 minutes, we were doing that. We were getting runners going forward. And like I say, we were really, really unfortunate not to score and go in the lead. And we were also probably unfortunate to have a man sent off, Jab. We don't, we don't want to talk too much about the referee, but it was, it was pretty 
yeah, it, pathetic. Yeah, it was, it was shocking. Even, I looked, looked at it a few times, I thought, what the hell is going on here? What is, what is the referee seen? Sometimes, you know, um, luckily it didn't affect the, the, the overall out, outcome and they weren't going to spoil our party. Well, we said, well, there's the, probably the worst decision of the night, too, deflection, no goal kick. I, but, think, I think the sending off was the worst <laughs> decision. Uh, it's 50 50. Um, <laughs> but as, as Jabo says, it didn't affect. The, uh, the, the main outcome of the evening. Now, of course, don't forget, if you're watching along live on our YouTube stream, then UK fans head over to the Match Centre to pick up your streaming pass and listen along with Dave, uh, Victor and Matt Hitchcock and international fans, you can watch along here on Orient Live too. And, of course, don't forget, we have another game on Tuesday and the O's are on the road when they travel to Mansfield Town. That one is available to stream for UK and international fans. Head over to the same website, join us, get behind the boys and witness some history. But now let's take a look at today's opposition in crew Alexandra. Now, some might say that they have their flip-flops on, but any game in League 2 is a tough game. Having won three and lost three of their last six, here is how crew are lining up in goal. Number one, David Richards. Number two, Kevin Miller. Number five, Rod McDonald. The captain, number six, Luke Offord. Seven, Christopher Long. Number eight, Connor Thomas. Number nine, Courtney Baker Richardson. Number 11, Dan Ajayi. Number 18, Ryan Finnegan. 21, Tariq Uwaki. Number 25, Joel Tabiner. And on the bench for crew is Booth, Ainley, Griffiths, Brooke, Nevitt, Amu and Robertson. Now, I mean, this stage of the season's a weird one. We've obviously got the title to play for. They're safe. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a tough one to call. Crew could, could turn up already on their holidays or they could turn up with absolutely no pressure. It's hard to call. It can, it can be a tough one to call, especially at this stage of the season, especially a team like Crew that hasn't really got much to play for. But there's a couple of players out there that we're playing for the contracts, playing for a certain opportunities for next season. And, and in them, they've got a, a couple of strikers that on the day that are very deadly. And, um, you know, they'll be playing to get into those double figures and to get to secure maybe moves away from the club. So they're going to be on their game. It's, it's, it's a weird one. Also, players playing for contracts. They've scored a few goals. They've conceded a few goals. It's just a really hard one to call. Yeah, they're a real mixed side. Obviously, they're safe. They've got nothing to play for. But, but like Chapo was saying, you, you've got players, they're going to want to upset the party today. They're going to come here with nothing to play for. They're like, they know that we could win the championship today. They're going to want to upset the party. They've got probably players I couldn't really hear because of the music and the singing. I don't know if Jabbo's already said this, but they've probably got players out of contract as well who are fighting for a new contract, so we don't know what that's going to be. But they do score goals because they've got some very, very good players, but they also concede as well, which is a real bonus for us because we know what we're like in attack and our front three, front four when we're on it. I, I think it'd be a tough game today, and I say it every single week, we get that first early goal. If we get it early enough, I think they'll fold. We get that early goal, get the crowd behind us. It's going to be a full house here today. Everyone's, as Kent said, his new word is buzzing. Everyone will be buzzing. Get everyone off their seats. And I think we'll go on and score three or four if we get that early goal in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, that's a big if, but let's look yeah. at crew for a second. And Daniel Ajayi, the, uh, the striker for them, he's, he's got a few goals recently and he looks like a handful. Yeah, very, very much so. I was, I was watching him warming up today and he, he's, he's, a, he's got a great physique, um, really aggressive in his play and he's having a great season and he's going to be one to watch today because I think he's going to try and put on a show because there'll be suitors for him. He'll, he'll, he'll want to try and say, look, you know, I'm going to do the business today. Can I come along on your party too? So when, you, when you're in that rich reign of form as a striker, especially coming to the end of the season, you just want to score as many goals and get close to that 20 goal mark. And as you can see here, He's, 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 a, he's a real threat, he's got a real presence about him, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he's always alive in the box, he, he shoots on sight and he can strike a ball, so it's definitely one today we've got to keep He eye picks on. up, looking at these clips here, he, he picks up some very, very good positions, doesn't he? Yeah. He's not a, like a typical centre forward who's one dimensional, he picks up many, many good positions off the ball and he knows he's in the right place at the right time, the ball's dropping all over the box and he seems to be there off of these clips need to defend our box well and it's a slightly changed back four and force with Omar's suspension and, and of course Jaden Sweeney returning to the side so Jamie McCartan head turns they've, they've got to have to they've obviously played a couple games together they played at Stevens they're going to have to, to strike up a, a, a quick partnership again and, and try and keep him quiet yeah definitely and it's no, we, we've got the we have got the best defence in the league I'm right in saying that yeah. yes Omar being out of side is a big loss for us massive loss we've got the, the two new centre backs like the pairing They've just got to keep it very simple today. 
Do what you're there to do. It's defend our goal. Don't overcomplicate it with a ball at your feet. But I think with our players, our midfield, our attackers, and looking at the stats for the possession stats on Tuesday night, how much we keep the ball. If we could just, if they could get the ball, give it to the fullbacks, give it to the midfielders, don't do anything silly and let them play. We'll keep the ball. They won't have too much to do, I'm hoping. But they're both the sort of centre halves. If the ball comes in the box, they'll get their head on it. Like an old school centre half, they'll get their head on it, they'll kick someone, they'll clear it. That's all we want them to do yeah. today. We don't need them to get complicated like we've seen in the Premier League with teams trying to dribble out the back and pass it in little triangles don't need to do that today today's about winning the game not about a performance yeah. and do you expect or it will need to, to be the side bringing the intensity for that to happen yeah of course they can't just um, rest on the laurels like, like Glenn was saying everyone just has to do their job they have to do anything extra than what you've done all season just go and do the job and we'll, and we'll get the result we need well the result we need will be very welcome indeed and of course we need a result to go our way elsewhere in the Football League as well so we'll come on to that if we have to but let's not jinx it just yet but let's remind ourselves of how the O's are going to be lining up this afternoon we've got just under eight minutes until kickoff, and two changes from Tuesday night's promotion party in goal. We have number 22 Lawrence Vigoru. We have the back four. Number 24 Jaden Sweeney returns, as does number 33 Jamie McCart, who replaces the suspended Omar Beckles. He partners number 43 Ed Turns, and number 32 Rob Hunt occupies the right back position. We have the two midfield generals of 15 Idris El Mazzuni and the captain, the birthday boy, Darren Prattley. And that fluid front four, that's been unchanged for a few games now. It's 34 Kieran Sadlier, 14 George Monker, 7 Paul Smith and 10 Ruel Sotirio. And on the bench for the O's, Sam Sargent, Tom James, Shadrach, OG, Craig Clay, Jordan Brown, Aaron Drynan and Charlie Kelman. So that is how the O's are lining up. And that, that fluid front four, I think... I can't remember off the top of my head the first game. I think it might have been the home game. I can't remember off the top of my head. I can't remember. But they've been learning each other's games. Uh, you look at the Sutton game, that, that Gillingham performance, Salford, my word, they they are firing and hopefully they'll be, be thriving off of that still. Okay, we've had a bit of disruption up there. Like we've, we've not had Theo Archibald plan for a, a number of weeks now. Last year, back in the last season when Richie came in, it, it, we had the nucleus of them forwards here at the club. And he got them and he, and he talks about the diagonal runs and listen to this crowd, by the way. Um, he, got them, he got them moving, he got them like telling them where he wants them to play, where he wants them to make runs. So some of that work was done last year, but it's sort of trans, transferred into this season. The beginning of the season, like you say, started really, really well. And we've had injuries, we've had suspensions, we've had players come in, but they all seem to know what they should be doing and and I know we've said about our defence best defence in the league I think we've got the best midfield in the league and I think we've got the best forwards in the league <laughs> hence the reason we're top of the league but every single team we come up against are petrified to play, about playing against our forwards and the atmosphere is really building here the, the atmosphere is really building here yeah. Jabbo it's been a long time a few years since we've experienced this noise before yeah. kick off really yeah. uh, we do need results to go elsewhere uh, else elsewhere yeah. need to go our way in order for us to achieve what we want to achieve We're looking at the table that was on screen a second ago Stevenage Mansfield is the game that all Orient fans will have their eyes on we can have our, as many eyes on it as we want but the job still needs to be done here today yeah 100% all, all we've got to do is focus on what we can do first and foremost and then we can take care of what's going on elsewhere well I'm, I'm, I'm very confident in the lads getting the job done and doing what's necessary and hopefully the results elsewhere go in our favour and we can celebrate I mean, the boys will have that in their mind, though, Glenn. They will be, you know, they, they know that it's possible today. Do you think that will spur them on that little bit? <laughs> the boys will know that promotion is possible today. Do you think that will be spurring on that little bit more? Oh, 100%. 100%. They've had a couple of days off, like as Richie said in a the week. They're back into training yesterday. They're focused from what Ken was saying. Trained really well. They're, they've got a point to prove. They've got a point to prove. Remember back in January when Stephen is beat us away? And they got very, very close to sort of overtaking us at the top of the league. And there was a lot of stuff going around with their players and their manager coming out in the press. That wasn't a nice feeling. They want to they want to win this title and, and shove a few critics down other people's throats. And relegation was at the hands of crew back in 2017, that awful day uh, when we dropped out of the Football League. How poetic, how beautiful is it that today could be the day that we, we win the league against them. It's just like a, a full circle almost. Let's not get carried away, Ollie. Come on. <laughs> no, no, it would be. It's a, football has a, has a way of doing things like that. 
I made my Leighton Orient debut against Crew, so throw that into the mix what as well. Back, <laughs> Sorry. What year was that? Oh, 1994. Before you were born, I think. Okay, I think. It was. Oh, it'd be a bit earlier than that oh, as well. Oh, wow. uh, what's going through the players' minds now, though, Jabo? Because uh, as buzzing as they will be off the last couple of days, this this game now, uh, the, the scarves are swinging, the, the, the fans are singing. My word, they, they must have a little bit of nerves on the go. Uh, they're buzzing, they're buzzing. They're in a rarefied atmosphere right now, and, and they're just going to go out there full of confidence. They're gonna, they're gonna just play some magnificent football. I, I, I know that feeling. I, I know how it feels when you're, when you're there. And you know, I think they're gonna do the job. And they just want to finish the game, do it well, and celebrate with the fans. I've got a big prediction today. I think we'll use all five subs. <laughs> I mean, they will be. They will be maybe a little bit tired from Tuesday night, shall we say, because the game went on so late. No other reason. But that, that doesn't matter at this stage, does it? You could. You could have trained on Friday, I think it was, and that's the only training they've had. But at this stage of the season, how much does that really matter? I mean, preparation is always key, always, always, always. So it might have an effect, but the mentality, the mindset, where they are and how they're feeling will just on this occasion surpass that. And they'll, and they'll, and they'll be on it. They're just going to be flowing and they're going, to, they're going to put on a show. And in terms of an actual footballing game then, you say we'll be using a lot of subs, Glenn. But what way do you see this one going? I fully expect a home win. I think any, anyone looking at this game from around the country would fully expect an Orient win today, purely because Crew have got nothing to play for. Um, some people say they've got their flip-flops on and, and waiting to go on holiday. But we, we really, really, I think, the, like we've said, the boys have got a point, point to prove. We've got a full house here. After all the videos online, on the social media, everything, the expectation levels today, talking to supporters in the ground, and before I got in the ground today, there's a real buzz about it, and, and everyone expects everyone expects us to win the championship today. Every single supporter I spoke to, not one of them is nervous at all. So that that shows you what's going to come up. Well, they're looking fairly relaxed there in the tunnel, and they are ready to rock like a wagon wheel, and they're ready to make their way out onto the pitch and get this game underway. So let's hand over now to our match commentary team of Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock. season this has been about the incredible journey over the last six years and on Tuesday supporters were singing Justin Enderborough's name and Justin being so proud of what has been achieved but we know that Richie Wellens will not settle with just promotion an Orient victory today and if Stephen is fail to win at Mansfield 